What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to dive into the realm of home labs by introducing you to an incredible tool that will revolutionize the way you manage your web applications called Heimdall. So let's get to it. So what exactly is Heimdall? Well, imagine having dozens or maybe hundreds of services within your home lab from containers and hosts to networking gear and Kubernetes. It can quickly become overwhelming to keep track of everything, but fear not. This is where Heimdall will come in and save the day. Now Heimdall is an open source software that offers a visually pleasing and user-friendly app for managing all your web applications in one place. It's like having a command center for your home lab, providing you with, with quick access to all your favorite sites and tools that you have available to you. Now, one of the great things about Homdale is its customization options. You can truly make it your own from adding links to web applications, as well as search engines, and even your browser store page also to selecting visually a pleasing app design. Uh, Heimdall lets you fine tune your dashboard to suit your preferences. Now imagine having all your web applications neatly organized in one location. Well, Heimdall simplifies your life by streamlining access to your most used services. With this app API, you can easily integrate enhanced apps, foundation apps, and generic items all in a single dashboard. It's really a time saving solution that keeps everything at your fingertips. Now let's hop over to the website for Heimdall so we can check out a little bit more information about it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, so I'm at Heimdall.site. And of course, I always have a link down in the description of the video. And I also have the GitHub page for Heimdall up as well. So we'll go through that as well. But let's talk about the setup. Heimdall is incredibly user friendly. You can run it using a Docker image or a Heimdall container which means you can get it up and running in no time. And the best part, you can personalize your dashboard further by entering API credentials and adding links to web applications, search engines, and more. And a lot of this can be shown, you know, right here on the website, you can go through and read this. I won't read it word for word, but there is app support. So generic apps, foundation apps, and enhanced apps. And let's go down a little further, but as you can see, installation, this is the installation guide and I'll install it using Docker. There is a manual way of installing it, but Docker is the simplest way. And I recommend you guys do that. Check out the installation instructions on Ubuntu. Uh, it's very simple to install. All you gotta do is follow the, these steps and you can get it set up pretty quickly, but I'll actually show you guys how right now. So let's hop over to my virtual machine so we can get this thing set up. All right, so I'm logged into my Ubuntu virtual machine. I'm SSH'd into it because this is the simplest way to run the commands that I'm gonna run because we need to install Docker first and then we can install Heimdall. And check this out. I'm going to assume that you already have a server set up and you most likely don't have Docker installed on it. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the Docker install, which is super simple. Uh, let's go on and store it off by running uh, sudo apt updates and this will refresh the repositories you know all the packages and all that stuff cache things all that good stuff it'll go through and now we have to install a couple prerequisites i'll go down and uh just copy and paste it in there and i'll just kind of explain what those packages are but app transport over http s uh, then the ca certificates uh you can also add search to this server uh you can do that if you have a cert authority on your home lab or something to that effect. But I'm gonna just run it with just without those certs, but we need these 
installed or at least just verifying that they're installed and as you can see app transport https is not installed so that'll be installed on the system uh and so we'll run through that right fast now let's go down and grab the gpg key the official uh, GPG key from Docker's repository and add it to our system. And that will allow us to install a package. So uh, just follow that. And in a couple days, I'll put all of these commands that I run in a blog post. So you can just kind of copy and paste and run through this install using all the commands I'm running today. And then now let's add the Docker repository. So I'm going to kind of run through this stuff just explaining what is actually doing but that's that's just installing the docker repository to our app sources list uh very simple and now that that's done let's go down and uh run our pseudo apps updates again and that'll refresh you'll also verify that we have that docker repository added and so as you can see it says download.docker.com it's added to our system now so we can install from that repository now let's verify we'll be getting Docker from that repository. And you can run a simple command. It's called apt-cache and then policy for docker-ce. And you can look through this and see that the downloads.docker is the location where we will be installing it from. And you'll see it's kind of repeated throughout here, but download and also you can see that it's not installed yet on the system so that's where it'll be coming from it won't be coming from any other repository but that so let's go down and install docker-ce now get it on your system and then we can go through and install heimdall after this so let's run through this right fast and i'll be back when it finishes sometimes it takes a minute uh, but most of the time it's pretty fast but i'll skip ahead all right cool so Docker is now installed. And what you wanna do is just verify that it's installed by checking the services. Uh, this is the simplest way because Docker, what it's supposed to do during the install is store the service as well as enable the service. And you can find that information out by going into the system CTL status. So sudo system CTL status Docker, and I'm gonna tab it out. And basically what that is is service. So let's press enter and you can scroll up a little bit and you'll see that the service is active and running so that means it's stored it and then also right here it is enabled so every time you restore the computer uh this service will store so docker is successfully installed on your computer properly as long as you see this now let's go down and get Heimdall installed on the system and the first thing you want to do is run a built-in linux command and i'll clear the screen but you want to run id and this will give you all the information about the current user if you want to use this user as where you want to run the application because it's a long docker command in order to get the server set up for you and it's one command it's very simple you just need to adjust it uh, most of the time if it's, you only have one user on here which is yours uh the user id and the group id all that information should be the same it should be 1000 that's typically the first user that's created outside of you know the root account and all the other service accounts uh 1000 should be that default uh id for your user account and before we do that we need to create a directory for ihamdial install i'll show you guys how to do that all we got to do is hit m k dir for make directory and then we could just name it docker and what it'll do is put that in our home directory i'm gonna ls this directory you don't have to put anything else i see a lot of people they'll say oh you need to put the tilde and then a forward slash that lets you know i mean yeah that will work but in linux it's multiple ways to skin a cat and you don't have to do that in this case because right now if you go right here and look at this we are already under tilde so linux will automatically know that you want to put this new directory within your home directory so you don't have to put the full path uh it'll use the relative path uh and it's and create that directory for you so we get to go we got that docker directory created under our home directory now let's go ahead on and run our command and i'll break this full docker command out uh just so you guys don't know and what you want to do is use uh sudo i'm gonna copy it in here and then i'll break down everything that it's doing so you guys can understand exactly what's going on with this command and let's go to paste that in there boom 
and let's uh go through this right fast so it's basically sudo docker run we are naming the docker container which is hamdale uh which is cool uh detached uh this is the location of the configuration well this is where to write everything out uh and save things for uh heimdall as far as the container goes uh then you got your group ids uh, and you got your ports that it'll use. So you got 8080 uh, and port 80 and then 8443. And most of the time you're just gonna be connected to this locally. Uh, and that's the way I recommend you do it. Uh, you don't want anybody to have access to this outside of your network anyway, because they can see all the services that you're running. You know what I'm saying? If they figure that out, figure out the IP addresses and all that stuff, they can see everything that's going on on your network and possibly find vulnerabilities and all that good stuff. And then also right here at the end, this is our Docker image that we want to use. So Heimdall. So let's go down and press enter and it'll run through it. It'll download the actual image and store up our Docker container. And just to verify the status of our Docker container, I'll just go through this uh, simple command, but all we got to do is run sudo docker ps and then you can put dash a in there that way it'll bring up all the information about the actual system that's running so as you can see this container is running that's the status is up it's been up for 55 seconds it's using those ports uh and all that good stuff so let's go ahead on and hop over to our browser and then we can open up this heimdall install on our server and in order to get to it, we need to find out what our IP address is. So let's run the IPA command and that will give us our IP address of the server. And what we're looking for is our main IP address for the interface. So it's 174. So 192.168.10.174 on my network, it may be different for you. So that's why you need to run that command as well. So you can find out what the IP address is. And if we scroll back up here, as you can see, it's running on port 8080 so we need to put 192.168.10.174 and then we have to put the port of 8080 on the end of it so let's go on and hop over to our browser again i went on and copied that ip address and then i can show you guys how to get this thing set up once you got it on your system all right let's go on and add another tab and go on and uh put our IP address up there and then our port. So 80, 80. And as you can kind of see up here at the top, uh, in the beginning, I just put the IP address in there and then I added the port. So that's why it's not showing anything, but now it should go straight to the site. Boom. And as you can see, the first thing that'll pop up, it'll say there are currently no pinned applications. And so you can go up here and add your applications. And so I'll add a few right fast, uh, some of my own you know, applications, let's add one, let's add one of my pie holes. So let's go in here. Uh, this is one cool portal body. You just hit application type, go down and you can find whichever one you're looking for or what you're actually looking for. So they got a whole bunch in here, PF sense. Um, like one thing I saw that was, I thought was super cool is PHP, my admin, uh, but pie hole, we're going to go with pie hole. And as you can see, it kind of connects to that API grabs the icon for it and that's what the link will actually look like you could change the color if you want to if you want it blue or something and then right here the tag the tags uh home dashboard so right here you want to put your you know and i already have my ip address in there uh because i put it in there before just playing around with something else but as you can see uh all you gotta do is put an ip address of your pie hole and then it'll automatically select pin but all you gotta do is hit save but if you wanna i just want to show you a little bit more if you want to change the icon you can upload an icon right here to change it up uh right here it automatically puts the description in there so it's all based on the application you know what i'm saying you can add to this description uh config here is an optional config uh if different from the main url you can add an api key test it you know, all that good stuff. Now, all you got to do is hit save, boom, and it'll pop up there on your homepage and says item created, boom. And so if you want to go to your pie hole, all you got to do is hit this link right here and it'll open up your pie hole. Uh, if that's the right um, IP address on your network, it'll just open it up in a new tab. That's the default settings. But let me show you guys a little bit more. So if we go down in here to settings, uh, this is all the changes you can make to it. So this is the version, you know, information, background image. You can change that if you want to. Right now it's using a default. 
uh, home search page, you could change that to yes. And this will allow it to have a search on the home page. And I'll show you guys that when we go back to it. And then you could change the default search provider. So let's say you want to change it to DuckDuckGo or Google or Start Page or Bing. Uh, I would recommend DuckDuckGo because it doesn't track what you're doing, but you can hit save there. Uh, that'll add that there. And then links open in. Uh, the same tab or another tab. So what you want to set that is open in new tab, uh, which it should do that by default. I'm not sure uh, why you would need to do that because I think it opens them up in a new tab by default uh, right here under advanced. You got some custom CSS you could throw up in there, custom JavaScript if you want to, but that's pretty much it. And you can export your config. You can import, you know, the config to a new server if you move it or something to that effect you know what i'm saying and then you can be up and running in no time on a new system uh now tag list you can go back under here the default tag list is home page uh, which won't show here but you can add your own tag list and you can separate things prior to tag list now application list if you hit application list this will list out all the applications that you've added so far so all your little tags that are on the front uh they'll list out here uh you can add more you can update the app list um, but this will open up that same setup that we ran in the beginning to create a new one. So I'm gonna cancel that and then I'm gonna cancel that right there. And then as you can see, our search is up there now. So we can start searching up here. Uh, and let's go on to test it out right fast. Let's just run test search. Boom. It'll open it up in a new tab. So like I said, you can have this set up as your home page that opens up every single time you uh, open up a browser or something to that effect. You just got to go into your Chrome settings and change that up. Uh, you can reorder uh, the pin items. So if you got more than one, boom, boom, you can move them around. Uh, I'm going to turn that off, but hold on. Let's uh, hit it again. I'll turn it off. Uh, and then you can click there. That'll take you back home if you're somewhere else, which I doubt it. Um, it's only, you know, this page right here. Very simple application, very simple to set up. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is install Docker, download that image, and you can run it on your system and set this thing up it's super cool so that's all for today's video and if you enjoyed it don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content similar to this and let us know in the comments down below what other open source tools or linux topics you'd like us to cover i hope you guys have a wonderful day and of course keep it techy